What's going on y'all? Here with the Prelude and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to convert your Honda to an electric power steering system. So to start off, this can really apply to any 90s or 2000s Honda, whether it be a Civic, an Accord, a Prelude, even an Integra because we all know what the stock system looks like. It, it's a bracket, a pump, a pulley driven by a belt, takes up this entire area. We all know what it looks like and they're pretty much the same for all these Hondas. So this is going to apply, you know, not just to a Prelude, but to really any Honda with a stock style pump. And I'm gonna be going over that whole process today. So to start off with questions, I know people ask why you would want to do this, what are the benefits, you know, pros and cons, how does it feel? So to start off, this isn't for everybody. This is mainly gonna be for people that, one, just think it's cool, and I fit into that category. Um, maybe they just don't like having that whole system here it takes up a lot of space um, and they just want it deleted but they still want to retain power steering so that's gonna be one reason two is gonna be for maybe turbo guys people that need clearance in their bay because as you as you know that stock system can uh, take up a lot of space so I'm actually coming at you guys from the future because if you couldn't tell, this is the AN line coming out of my electric pump. I already did the full conversion. The pump is sitting in here. This is the Volvo electric pump. And this is the high pressure line coming off of it, going into my steering rack. I'm gonna I'm gonna be going over the whole process though. I just didn't like the original intro I film. So, like I said, one, it's gonna be for guys that just want it to look cleaner. Uh, two, it's gonna be for guys that you know, maybe have a turbo build, they need clearance in their bay, but they still want to retain power steering. Um, and you know, that's about it. You know, it's not for everybody. Uh, if you have time on your hands and you have a little bit of extra money, then go for it because honestly, this only took me one day. Uh, it definitely didn't take long. Uh, I prepared by getting all the parts that I needed, which I will be going over. And you know, it's pretty easy, I will say. So. That's pretty much it. I'm going to be going over the entire process with you guys and uh, let's get into it. All right, so this is pretty much most of the parts that you'll need for this conversion. So to start off, this is the electric pump. This is a Volvo power steering pump out of like a Volvo S60. I think some S80s came with them too, but you'll just have to research. This is just research a Volvo electric power steering pump. They make different versions. So this one, the reservoir is actually external from the pump so this will have a hose in between these so this uh reservoir will be higher up and located somewhere else but they'd make a different version of this pump where pretty much instead of a fitting for a hose it's a screw on cap so it, the reservoir is essentially built into the pump so there's a couple different versions they're exactly the same as far as wiring though so this is the wiring have a uh have a plug right here. This is the big gauge wire for the main power. And then this is pretty much this is how it's going to be switched on or off or however you wire it. So that's the smaller wire. Um, to be able to pretty much convert it to your stock system, or do what I did, which I just got AN hose and I got PTFE fittings. Just make sure it's PTFE because this is very high pressure. I mean, I'm pretty sure this puts out more than like a thousand PSI. I think more than that. So um, you, you'll you need PTFE hose uh, to be able to do this, which I already installed the ends. Um, if you want to learn how to do that, just look up videos. There's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube. You could either connect, because this is what's going to hook up to the high pressure side, and then the other side will go to your steering rack. And pretty much that's just how, you know, it'll work. Pretty much. Other than that, uh, this is the heavy gauge wire. I think it's eight, eight gauge that's for this and then this just kind of like regular regular sized uh wire um have a 80 amp fuse this is just going to be inline fuse from in between the power to the battery just for safety this is the fitting i use so there's a part number this one is the high pressure line so this is the one that actually goes into the high pressure side it converts it this is, an, is actually an adapter fitting. So this adapts this high pressure to an AN6. And then this is the one that goes onto your steering rack. So there's a part number. Then this one goes on, screws into your rack where your old high pressure line would go. And then this also converts it to an AN line. 
So overall, if you really think about it, it's a pretty a pretty simple process. I mean, quite literally, you're changing from a mechanical pump to an electrical pump. So really, the high pressure comes out of the electrical pump. So that's really all you need to do. So there it is. Um, I will say I made a mistake at first and I got this high pressure fitting. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell the difference. The one on top is the first one I got and it just didn't work. So pretty much it's an o-ring that seals it. So you see how there's a gap right there and then on the upper one there's not a gap. So this is the wrong one because but you could screw this all the way in and the bottom you know it bottoms out before that o-ring even makes a seal and like I said when you compare them there's no gap on the top one so this bottom one there's a gap and when you screw it in which I don't have an o-ring in there now but when you screw it in I know it's correct because when you barely close that gap before it even bottoms out you'll feel it squeeze that o-ring so if you want to make sure this is going to work make sure that you screw this side in with the o-ring and make sure you feel that o-ring get uh, compressed so overall this is what you'll need so pretty much now you just need to remove your stock power steering system and so pretty much the first step would just be removing the old hydraulic system so i mean this is obviously the high pressure line uh, you just want to drain the fluid take off the belt then you'll be able to just have this whole area free and the stock system will just be deleted so it'll just look cleaner. So um, that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm just gonna loosen up the pump and just take it out. Drain it. All right, so right now, pretty much, I just got all the stock power steering stuff out, which is right here. So here's the reservoir that's out, the pump and pulley that's out, and this is the high pressure line. So this is what usually went on top of the pulley and this goes to the steering rack so that won't be used anymore so for whatever car you got whether it's a Civic, a Cord, or a Prelude you just need to you know know how to remove this high pressure line and that's pretty much it and I already got the AN line ran with an adapter to you might be able to see it hold up so where you see that silver adapter that's where the high pre the stock high pressure line used to go so if you see that that silver connection that's the new one that's where the an line is and as you see it's ran up here the plan is to pretty much put it down here and have plenty of plenty to play with so um pretty much that's just going to go in there and so pretty much wherever you locate your electric pump you can locate it anywhere in the car some drift people locate it in the trunk of their car because uh, weight distribution and stuff personally I I deleted my washer reservoir years ago so I don't have a washer reservoir in here so that's where I plan on installing the pump is in here and um, pretty much that's my next step I mean I already got all the stock stuff out pretty much it's ready mount up the electric pump so and as far as the electric pump goes and as you see I already got the adapter on there uh, it would be if you get it from a junkyard it would be very wise to uh, to get the bracket with it as you see this bracket connects in three spots and it holds up the pump so if you don't get that bracket with it you may or may not have trouble you would have to make your own bracket pretty much so if you get it off the car yourself I would highly suggest is taking a bracket because I'm going to be able to mount it using it. So, yep, I'm about to take this bumper off and we can continue. All right, y'all, so I have everything mounted up. Got the whole stock system removed. So the belt, the pump, the pulley, and the high pressure line is all deleted. So now it looks really clean. And I have the high pressure line for the electric pump into the steering rack and have the electric pump mounted up. I used some stock mounting points. There's some bolts up there that mounts it and it's very solid. Um, it clears like everything. And um, so that's how it's mounted up. I can talk about the wiring now. So there's two harnesses, which is these, uh, a big one and a small one. So the big one, the red wire that comes out of that goes straight to the battery. And it'd be safe to use an 80 amp fuse, which is why I'm using and that's straight to my battery. It's, it's routed under everything. The black one can just go to a ground, which I have it bolted 
uh, to the to the support right here. So that's it for that. That gets straight power all the time. But the way this gets switched on is the small harness. So as you see, I have a couple uh, wrapped up. Those don't get used. So the red and gray don't get used, and the blue and red don't get used either. So the one that you will use, which is what uh, switches on this pump, is the blue, the light blue and gray wire. So that's it. That one just needs a 12 volt ignition source and you can either do that by wiring in a switch or using an existing switch which is what I'm doing. I'm going to put it on my cruise control switch because my cruise control is deleted. Along with my EVAP all that's deleted because I'm on a Honda Atta S300 so you don't need any of that. Um, this is how my high pressure line is is ran so it does clear everything uh, there is a bend, but that's not concerning unless there's a kink. I don't believe there's this is going to be a kink at all. As you can see, I mean, there's plenty of play in the line. Same with the return line. Um, they're they're bent, but they're not kinked, and that's really what's important. So it's not kinked at all. It goes through there, out here, and it just goes to the stand rack, and that's it. This is the the reservoir for it. Um, so. I didn't really have a better way of mounting it because the stock mounts for the Volvos, these two tabs kind of press into some bushings. So there's not really a stock bracket. So, so far I just have it tied up. It's nice and secure, so it's not going to move around and hit anything, but this is how it's set up guys. So again, to the 12 volt ignition source, I'm running mine actually to my cruise control button because like I said I deleted my cruise control so if if you want to do this uh, to your cruise control button the one you need to use is the light green wire it's looking at it from this way it's the second one from left so it's a light green wire it's the only light green wire on the harness and that's the one that gets switched whenever you press the button so Shit, we can do a live demonstration right now. So I'm gonna plug this up. I'm gonna turn the key. Car's not on. And keep in mind, if you need to test your power, designed to where as soon as it gets the switch power, it takes about two or three seconds to actually turn on. So keep that in mind. Don't just put it on and assume it's not working. You gotta hold it and after about three seconds, it'll come on. So car's off, but the ignition is on. And this is the switch and you'll hear it all right so I'm a freaking idiot I forgot that I unplugged those two plugs so I went to to do this live demonstration I pressed it I was like oh shit it's not coming on but I just had those unplugged because I was showing you guys but anyways press it and you can hear it notice the car is off and I have power steering <laughs> that is so cool all right, so I don't want to drain my battery. I'm going to turn everything off. But that's pretty much it, guys. As you can see, it's it's a pretty simple install. Just to go over it again, you just need the Volvo electric pump. You need to convert it to AN line onto your rack. Other than using custom high pressure line, you just need to find a way to mount it up, power it, and it's pretty simple. So overall, it's pretty easy. Um, and it's really cool. It makes it unique and it will give that look of having deleted power steering when you'll still have power steering. So definitely I'm going to do some GoPro vids of driving it. So here we go. What's up y'all? So pretty much the whole setup's done. I'm about to go for a test drive and tell you guys how it feels. So this is the final product. As you see, there's no bracket, no pump, no pulley or belt. This is the AN line going to the high pressure and everything is just nice and clean and pretty much that's it everything is pretty simple so we're about to go for a drive and I'm about to tell you all how it feels let's go all right so uh, I live here by some roundabouts so hopefully this should be a good uh, area to test this at but like I said uh, it feels really good let's just uh, go into some corners
switchback feels really good. Um, doesn't have any problem going from left to right or right to left. No delay or anything. Let's go into some another corner. There's a lot of traffic right now. It's like eight o'clock out. I don't know why there's so much traffic. Jesus. I mean it feels really good it has no problem handling t handling turns um, obviously I'm not like on a mountain road right now I'm just going around some roundabouts but you know it still feels really good I have full confidence that even on the mountain that this would feel really good um, obviously on the mountain there's a lot more back and forth this does a great job I have no complaints whatsoever and like I said as far as the feel goes it it feels good I, it's so hard to explain it because it's one of those things you kind of have to feel yourself to really get a gauge on how it feels but like I said it's not too much which you know was really good that's kind of what I was hoping for Should be a pretty quick switch back, so we'll uh, see how it acts here. Yeah, it had zero problems switching back there, so I am loving how this thing feels. It's not too much, it's not too little. It, it you know, the best thing about it, it keeps that road feel. So, you know, if it was too much, I feel like it would be numb, but even, you know, doing this, it still feels very direct and, you know, that's, it's like the best way I can describe it. It's not too much. So that's really good and I'm, I'm loving how it is. And, you know, with the flick of a button, I can just turn it off if I really wanted to. So say if you cruise on the highway, you technically don't even need to give it power because you're not going to be using the power steering. And I'm just going to park. You can kind of hear it. But you just turn it off. And see now I don't have power steering. So yeah, that's it guys. Hopefully you guys liked the video. You know, I did try to make this a good video just to just to uh, really get this information out there because not a, I don't see this a lot, which you know, most people wouldn't really have a need to do it, especially if you if your car is just like a regular car to you. Um, but if you have the time, the money, and the patience, because taking off that stock line, I mean, it wasn't hard, but it wasn't easy either. So, um, but if you get all the parts, the AN line, the adapters, and everything, it's pretty much simple and bolt-on, honestly. So, I have no complaints with this system. I'm, I'm pretty much loving it so far. It just really modernizes the car, which was the goal. And um, I'm just very happy with it. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Thank you guys for watching. I mean, if you're if you're this far into the video, thank you for watching because uh, that's pretty dope. Uh, I tried to make this uh, informational videos, and I hope it was because, like I said, this can apply to any '90s or even 2000 Civic uh, or Honda, I should say. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys.